So welcome back to my channel Orchid House. I'm Olivier in Fort Lauderdale, Florida, South Florida actually. And uh, today I wanted to briefly talk about Paraphalaenopsis. Uh, I haven't bloomed these yet, uh, but I just wanted to mention a few things about them. So uh, they are, there's only four species in this very small genus. They all grow in Borneo, the big island of Borneo in Asia. And all of them have a very fairly uh, small geographical range. So they don't even uh, overlap. So they are each in their little corner of the island. Uh, some of them are near extinction. Now, uh, what I want to show you is that these are very slow grower. And uh, in case you get impatient, just want to show you what you have to look for when they start uh, growing. So initially, you're going to have to uh, have them settle and have grow roots. So you really should uh, be uh, mounting them. I mean, some people put them in the pot and grow upwards. Apparently, it works. But this is their natural, uh, the, the way they grow in nature. So that's that's the best way to do it. So the way I uh, I start, I just put a little bit of uh, sphagnum moss. There's hardly anything left here because this one is already established. Uh, and then uh, the roots start growing. You see this one has a good, good root there. There's another one here behind. So this one is established. I've only had it for one year. This is Lake Okiai. Uh, it's actually the easiest to grow. Uh, it will be more forgiving if you make mistakes when uh, you start growing it. Uh, and it's also uh, the fastest growers because, like I said, the other ones are very slow growing. So let me show you Labucensis, that's the largest of them all. Paraphalaenopsis Labucensis. These are very, I forgot to measure them before uh, making the video, but I would say this is like what maybe three feet long already, it can be uh, three times that. Uh, I bought this three years ago. <laughs> so uh, this was my first growth and it took a year and a half to reach maturity. So it's very, very slow growing, it hasn't bloomed yet. Uh, but so basically, if you start growing these, so you have to be patient. Uh, first establish them, make sure they have a good root system. This one has tons of roots everywhere, so it's very well established and loves its mount. And so basically what you're going to be looking for is the growth starts from the center. It grows from the previous, the most recent growth. So this was the one that grew for a year and a half. And as you can tell, uh, there's a new one growing from the base now. So that's how they grow. So look for the inside. Uh, the ones that are outside are going to eventually fall off. Now you can see this better here. Like I said, I've had this one for only a year now. It hasn't bloomed either, but it's well established. I already grew this one uh, in fully and then there's a new one growing there. So again, right in the middle, that's what you're looking for to make sure that your plant is, uh, is happy and starts growing. Uh, this is slowly dying out and eventually will fall out. I already lost one there. That's normal. That's how they do it. So I'm really looking forward to the first blooms. It might take a while. Like I said, these are very slow growing. Uh, another thing I wanted to mention, they are called para Paraphalaenopsis. Uh, for kind of obscure reasons, initially they were called Phalaenopsis because the structure of the flower is very similar to a Phalaenopsis. And then in 1963, uh, a new uh, genus um, was created, Paraphalaenopsis. And it's actually a fairly unfortunate because in the end, uh, besides the similar uh, flower structure, they have very little in common genetically. And so, for instance, you cannot cross hybridize between Paraphalaenopsis and Phalaenopsis, whereas these are going to happily uh, get married with any type of vendation, so at least most of them. Uh, and I thought there was one more thing I wanted to mention to you, but it escapes me now. So I guess I'm going to leave it at that for now. Uh, yes, so the other, the one more thing I wanted to mention. So these are terete leaves. So usually people would think highlight and drought resistant, but that's not the case. So these are very thirsty plants. You cannot let them dry out uh, for long. Uh, and also, while I give them a reasonable amount of light, apparently not too much because they are still green, these will not take uh, high Vanda light. It's more like Cattleya type. Thank you so much. Have a great day.